November 9, Ezekiel 9, 1 to 10, 22. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charged over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's ink horn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man, clothed with linen who had the writer's ink horn at his side and the Lord said to him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done with it within it to the others he said to my hearing Go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity. Utterly slay all the young men, maidens and little children, and young and little children and women. But do not come near any one on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the court with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them, I was left alone, and I fell on my face and cried out and said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For they say, The Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare, nor will have, nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed clothed with linen who had the ink who had the ink horn at his side reported back and said I have done as you commanded me and I looked and there is a firmament that was above the head of the cherubim there appeared something like a sapphire stone having the appearance of the likeness Overthrown. Then he spoke to the man clothed with linen and said, Go in among the wheels under the cherub, fill your hands with coals of fire from among the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. And he went in as I watched. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up, went up from the cherub and passed over the threshold of the temple. And the house was filled with a cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the wings of cherubim was heard even in the outer court like the voice of Almighty God when he speaks. Then it happened when he commanded the man clothed in linen saying take fire from among the wheels from among the cherubim that he went in and stood beside the wheels and the cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherubim to the fire that was among the cherubim and took some of it and put it into the hands of the man clothed with linen who took it and went out the cherubim appeared to have the form of a man's hand under their wings and when i looked there were four wheels by the cherubim one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by each other cherub the wheels appeared to have the color 
of a burial stone. As for their appearance, all four looked alike as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went toward any of their four directions. They did not turn aside when they went, but followed in the direction and head and the head was facing. They did not turn aside when they went, and their whole body with their back, their hands, their wings, and their wheels that that the four had were full of eyes all around as for the wheels they were called in my hearing wheel each one had four faces the first face was the face of a cherub the second face the face of a man the third face of a lion and the fourth the face of an eagle and the cherubim were lifted up this was the living creature i saw by the river chebar when the cherubim went the wheels went beside them and when the cherubim lifted their wings to the mount up to mount up from the earth the same wheels also did not turn from beside them when the cherubim stood still the wheels stood still and when one was lifted up the others the other lifted itself up for the spirit of the living for the spirit of the living creature was in them when the glory of the lord departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim and the cherubim lifted their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight when they went out the wheels were beside them and they stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house and the glory of the God of Israel was above them this is the living creature i saw under the god of israel by the river chebar and i knew they were cherubim each one had four faces and each one four wings and the likeness of the hands of a of a man was under their wings and the likeness of their faces was the same as the face which I had seen by the river Chebar, their appearance and their persons. They each went straight forward. Psalm 121, 1-8 to A Song of Ascents I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from the whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your food to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Proverbs 28.16 A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor. But he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. Hebrews 5, 1-14 For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in, in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is also subject to weakness because of this he is required as for the people so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins and no man takes this honor to himself but he who is called by god just as aaron was so also christ did not glorify himself to be to become high priest but it was he who said to him you are my son Today I have begotten you. 
as he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered, and having been perfect, perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing." For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk, not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your word, Lord. And your word is true, Lord. Thank you, God, for equipping us with your word, O Lord, so we may live a life in this world pleasing to you God hallelujah walk with us Lord in every season of our lives because apart from you God we are nothing hallelujah and we thank you God that we can do all things because of your strength alone Lord and I pray right now, God, that, you bless, that you're going to bless, O oh Lord, the reading of your word. And it's outgoing, O oh Lord, that it may touch the hearts of your creation, O oh God, and transform the lives of your children. Nothing is impossible in you, Lord. You are our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are our personal Savior. Thank you for saving us god thank you for your blood shed on the cross thank you for clothing us with your righteousness and trusting you everything lord you are my god my lord my my king you're the same god oh lord 